Hello, and uh, thank you for joining me in learning how to play Fermentum. Uh, Fermentum is Latin for grain, and this is a game about farming wheat in medieval Europe. Um, you are a peasant, not a lord in this game. Um, so each... the game takes place over a number of generations. Uh, three different generations. During the playtest version, I only have two generations set up. So you'll have an heir, and you start as Thomas Milroy, and there's going to be one other heir. Um, your heir tells you a certain amount of longevity. So six. Thomas Milroy has six working years. So this token here, this timer, is going to be placed at six. Um, after each year that it rolls over to January, you're going to move this down. Uh, once you reach one and it rolls over, you proceed to your next generation, which will be your eldest born son, should you manage to have one. So the main goals of the game, besides, um, no, the main the main goals of the game are surviving. So the first thing you want to do is make sure that you always have enough food to feed yourself during the months where food is required. So whenever you see this symbol, this bread feed family, you have to pay two food per adult. So February, May, August, and November. For every food you cannot pay, you will gain a disfavor. Disfavor is the only way to lose the game. Disfavor is gained by not feeding people. Disfavor is gained by not heating your home when it's cold. So this dice can sometimes show certain um, snowflakes, and that means that it's cold outside. And you need to spend dead wood to burn in your home. Otherwise, you'll gain disfavor for each one you can't spend, whether it's cold or freezing. And in addition, you need to pay your taxes. So each year during February, uh, your reliefs will be revealed, which are, which is the symbol right here. Reveal new reliefs. And if you come up here, there's a lord and a lady who also change with the generations. Right now, we have Lord Brock, who is genetics K, and Lord Ma and Lady Mary, who is genetics uh, one. So after this generation, these people are going to become K one and a new lady will appear because um, it's their child so they've got a number of uh, stats and features on them I suppose the most important ones for now are this reliefs so four here and one here that tells you how many total reliefs that you're gonna deal out so these are the the four plus one the five reliefs I've dealt out and then this one here tells you how many reliefs are due uh, when reliefs are due which is in November um, Lord here has two and the lady has none so you have to pay two of these by the end of the year for each one you do not pay you will gain a disfavor um, so those are the main three those are the, pretty much the only three ways to gain disfavor not feeding yourself not heating your home and not paying your taxes beyond those three things all you're trying to do is not gain disfavor but gain prestige whenever you can Prestige is the scoring mechanic of the game, and while making it through all the generations with zero prestige is technically a win, um, it's a game where you're aiming for a high score. So if you manage to get a lot of prestige over the course of your generations, you'll do well. Or you'll have a high score, rather. Additionally, prestige will enable you to marry um, certain ladies, um, which I will explain marriage, dowries, and um, children in a little while. Okay, so that is um, the basic concept of the game. So the way the game is played is by first, each turn, you'll look at this calendar. Um, this little sun here will tell you what month it's in. The symbols down at the bottom will tell you what you're supposed to do based on these this um, chart here. But during each season, you're going to gain two basic actions. So you'll put these here, and then you do your stuff for January, take two actions, move on to February. That will continue through each of the years. Um, and as each year advances, you're going to lose your working years, your longevity. Um, so the actions that you can take, I'll go over those next. These are these five actions. These are the core ways that you play the game and interact with the game. Um, after going over those, I'll go over the calendar, 
and then I believe everything else will be taken care of. So let's start with the actions. So the first action that you can take is plowing. Plowing is how you increase the soil quality of your fields. So let's come over to here to the fields. Your fields, you start with three of them, can each hold four seeds. So you can have, you know, two, 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 you can have four, 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 you can have three, three, zero. As long as you don't have more than four in the field, you're fine. Um, when it comes to harvest time, which is at the end of March and September, it's twice a year, at the end of March and September, you're going to take these dice, one for each um, seed that you have that has enough water, and you're going to roll them. So let's say I had four properly watered seeds, and I got these results. If my soil quality was negative one, I would subtract one from every face, not going negative on nothing. So this would be... Uh, Oops, that was a two. This would mean that only two things grow. Two wheat grow. So maintaining your soil quality is extremely important. And this is how you do it, by plowing. Plowing lets you reveal cards from the top of your soil deck equal to your endurance. So let's give this soil deck a shuffle. It starts pre-made, and it's composed of these things. Deadwood rocks, barren soil, and fertile soil. You can additionally add manure, rich soil, and... Um, clay through other actions I'll explain in a little bit. So when you plow, make sure the stack is good and shuffled, you're going to reveal cards equal to your endurance. So endurance is a stat that your heir has which is going to determine mostly how effective most of their actions are. So Thomas Melroy begins a game with six endurance. So when you plow, you're going to draw, or flip over, you can draw them too. You're going to flip over six cards. Then what you're going to do, you may activate, you may activate up to half of them. So when you activate them, you use the effect, um, like the main effect here. When you do not activate them, they will affect your soil quality based on what it says here at the bottom. So with this hand, let's say I chose rocks. I use the rocks ability, place rocks into trash pile. Then I use the fertile soil ability. So this card has been used. It has not. It's not affecting the soil, but it's being used to convert one barren soil into one fertile soil. So we'll convert barren into fertile. Additionally, this card was not used. It was merely converted, so it stays down here. I'll use this again, fertile soil, to convert barren into fertile. And then this card doesn't have a target, so I'll just leave it be. So all three of these cards. Um, are going to affect my soil based on what they say at the bottom. So plus two, plus two, plus two. Um, let's say that I, just for explanation's sake, that I had a barren soil here. So I could go minus one for the barren soil, and then go plus three and plus one, because I have a total of plus four and minus one that I have to distribute. Um, so yeah, now this field has good soil quality. Meaning that any time I roll the dice, like on the same roll, I would get plus one results. So that would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, as opposed to two. So maintaining your soil quality, while it might not be necessarily hard, um, although this deck will gradually decay if you don't upkeep it using other actions, um, increasing your soil quality is very important. Or maintaining it, rather. Additionally, during harvest time, when wheat grows in a field, it loses two quality, as the nutrients are sapped. If you ever have a field that grows nothing, what's called lay fallow, like this field, for instance, let's say we didn't plant anything here, it would automatically increase in quality by two. So rotating your fields is a technique that you can use, especially as you gain more and are just starting with not a lot. Okay, so that's the plowing action. And remember, each season you can take two actions. So if I plowed, that would be one. And I could, if I wanted to, plow again, or take a different action. So next, we'll do harrow. Harrowing lets you plant seeds into your fields. Seeds are st stored here, in your trash pile, um, along with 
rocks, manure, and clay, and other things. So when you harrow, you can plant any number of seeds. So even if you have 12 seeds, you can plant all of them. So in this case, I have six. So I could do... I could do this, or I could do this. Remember that four is the max. Or if I wanted to, I could even do that. So you could plant however many seeds you want. Then, you can take a number of cards from your trash equal to half of your endurance. So half of my endurance is three. And shuffle them into my soil deck. So in this case, I don't. I probably don't want to shuffle this rock back. However, rock, rocks let you gain more rocks, even though they mess up your quality. So it's, it's maybe something you want to do. There's also various other abilities that interact. However, more often than not, you're going to be wanting to put clay and manure. And clay and manure lets you upgrade barren into fertile and fertile into rich soil. Um, and those are gained through various other actions into your trash pile, which I'll explain in a little bit. But harrowing is pretty simple. It lets you plant seeds and then shuffle cards from your trash into your soil deck equal to half your endurance, if you want. I'll do bucket next. Bucket's pretty simple and pretty important. Gain water tokens equal to half of your endurance. So half of this guy's endurance is three. Then place them into your storeroom. So I would take three water tokens. Over here to my storeroom and place them in my storeroom. Additionally, you may then move any amount of water tokens from your storeroom to your fields. So even if I already had a bunch of water in there, I could move any amount of water from my storeroom to my fields. So in this case, let's say I wanted to do... this. And that would be legal, as long as I already had that water there. And again, you can double up on action, so I could double bucket if I need to. Um, next, you can take the basket action. So the basket action is more representative of going to market. It's not actually using a basket, I suppose. Um, but this one actually t costs two actions. So you must do it as the first thing in a season, unless you have extra... Um, extra actions you can play so two actions shop at the market you may also collect one clay or deadwood if able so shopping at the market means you come up here and you can buy the things that are displayed here so eight six and eight that's how much they cost the money in this game is wheat wheat has a trade value of one bread has a trade value of three and beer has a trade value of three porridge cannot be traded these are the main three Pretty much the only three things you can trade. Trade value three, trade value three, trade value one. Um, and when you spend an equivalent amount, either buying items from your, I'm sorry, items from the market, or you can buy buildings. When you buy a building, you have to pay the cost and the number of resources. So rocks are important because they're used in constructing some of these buildings. And dead wood which are these, you start with two. Deadwood's important because they're used in building construction, but also because you need to burn them during cold weather or else you'll take uh, disfavor. So every time you go to market, no matter what, you may collect one clay and you can put it in your trash pile. When you later harrow, you can shuffle it into your deck. Um, once you've paid your taxes for the year, so for the first year, it's paying two taxes. Let's say that I paid them. I'll explain that in a minute. Um, I may then collect dead wood when I go to the market. So I can take a dead wood. Um, so that's market. Uh, once you get a horse, uh, mar going to market only costs one action. And that's really hard to see right here. I'm sorry. But market minus one action, plowing and harrowing plus two endurance. i got to fix the font. But all right now. And the very last and maybe most important action, uh, depending on the season, is laboring. So laboring is, and I just set up this system over here, um, it's not entirely necessary, but it's useful to keep track. Basically, every space on this board, there's harvest, thresh, brew, winnow, bake, and boil. Every space on this board can be activated any number of times when you labor, up to your endurance. So you have six endurance, 
I can do this. I can harvest twice, I can thresh twice. And then I can... Here, I'll do each action once so that you can kind of see how things go. Um, so, harvesting. Harvesting moves two wheat from the field, so from your fields, to the raw wheat. So let's say that some wheat had grown in um, this field over here. Let's say that we had wheat. So when I take a harvest action, I move two of them from my field to my raw wheat. So harvesting is, of course, as you know, taking things from my whoa, wood hidden under there. Crazy. Um, harvesting, makes sense, is taking things from the field. Threshing is the act of separating the wheat from the chaff. Or not separating, I'm sorry, loosening. So when you thresh, one action of threshing, you can move two wheat from raw wheat into threshed wheat. When you do that, you also take two chaff, or seeds, they're the same thing, and you put them in there. Because it's basically you've loosened that chaff from that wheat. Uh, and you do that twice. When you winnow, you can see where this is going, winnowing, typically by throwing something in the air, is the act of separating the wheat from the chaff. So in this case, you move up to two wheat into wheat storage and two chaff into your trash pile. Wheat in wheat storage is now legal to be traded. So you can't trade raw wheat or thresh wheat, but you can trade stuff in wheat storage. Additionally, there's three more actions here. You have boil. Boil lets you lose one wheat from wheat storage and one and one water from your storeroom. So I lose one and one. Uh, and it gives me a porridge token. Porridge is worth one food, and that goes into your house. It's worth one food, and it cannot be traded. Um, so it's more like if you have beer and you need an extra food, but you don't want to bake a full bread. Um, additionally, when you have kids, you'll need to feed them porridge, but haven't gotten to that yet. Um, you can bake, which turns two wheat and one water into one bread token, which you could put in your house. To later consume. And then brewing. Brewing lets you move any number of wheat into malted wheat. However, per brew action, you can only move one water token. So I, let's say I take two brew actions, I could do this. Move two water and two wheat. And those just hang out in there until brewing season occurs, which is the first of each month. March, June, September, and December, this little brew symbol. When that occurs, you'll replace one-to-one -one with beer. So each combination of water and wheat will turn into a beer, which goes into your storeroom. Beer is worth one food value or three trade value. And you can also put this in your home if you want. Um, so yeah, that's the entire storeroom. Um, I believe next I will talk about the wheat properties and then get into the calendar and then we'll be good. So wheat properties. This represents the lineage and quality in, of, your, uh, the, of your wheat and the particular strain that you're growing. So you have four main uh, properties that your wheat can have. When you start the game, you may move one of these sliders one place. So let's start with quality. Quality, every time your quality goes up, you gain prestige. So if you move it to plus one, you'll gain one flat prestige. If you move it to plus two, you won't gain two extra, but you'll just gain one more so that you've gained two total. So basically each time it goes up, you'll gain one extra prestige. Additionally, based on your quality, you get a flat trade value discount on everything you purchase. Meaning once your quality is plus one, Horse costs seven, barn cat is five, trial is seven, and all the buildings cost one less as well. Um, and the apprenticeships, which I'll explain in a little while. So quality is good for prestige and trade value, uh, but it might be the least useful of them because it doesn't affect growth like the others. So yield, when you first increase it, nothing happens. But when you increase it again, you get these dice here, these four, instead of these four. And these ones have a much better distribution of die faces, or wheat, and a lot less barren 
meaning they produce wheat more and more and more. Uh, and you can move all the way up to the fourth set of dice, which are extremely nice. It's two, two, three, 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 four. So you can pre be producing a ton of wheat if you can manage to move your yield all the way up. Um, and these dice might need to be tweaked to be lowered a little, but that's okay. Um, resilience, once again, zero, zero, but once you get it to here, it becomes plus one, plus one, and then plus two. Resilience lets you resist the effects of negative soil quality, cold weather, which would harm your seeds or wheat, um, and pestilence. And pestilence is rolled during certain months um, for each field, and it lets you resist um, your crops being eaten. So res resilience is good because it lets you grow in bad conditions. Um, and retention. So retention is probably one of the more important important ones, and it starts in the middle here because it starts at one to one. What that means is for these seeds to grow, you need one water per seed. So I have a one to one ratio, I would grow two here. So if this goes down, it becomes one to one minus one. So I could grow this like this. And then once it gets to here, it's one to one minus two. So you can grow extremely drought resistant wheat. However, like this right here, you can grow. Um, you still need a minimum of one. So these two would need at least one and one would need at least one. Um, but you could water four for two if you if your retention is that low. It gets a little more complicated going up, but not too bad. This is one to one plus one, which means you need one more water than you have wheat. So you'd need two for one. Additionally, it resists losing water because there are certain weathers that make you lose water, like um, heat wave and drought. Um, and it retains water after harvest. So you'll have a water that remains there. Then you can get all the way into the floodplain. This requires a lot of water. There are a lot of cards to get water, so that might not be bad for you, but you know. Um, so this is one to one plus three. So that means you need one to one plus an additional three. So you'd need four water just for this one. Um, it resists all water loss from droughts and heat waves and it gives you one free yield score. Um, that might seem like a lot of water to need, but there are ways as you go on to get more efficient at, at water usage. Um, additionally, if you do not have the right amount of water, you will lose one maximum seed. So let's pretend um, one minimum seed. So let's pretend that this is what you're growing. Um, and your water retention is one to one. Two of these seeds aren't watered, so they die. So you'll always lose seeds that are not properly watered. However, if you ever overwater, like if your thing is one to one and you have three water and two seeds, you'll lose a maximum of one seed. So let's even put it like this. So let's say you have four and three. Um, you have too much water, but only one seed washes away, and the other two grow. Okay, um, so that's the wheat tracker. And then finally, we'll get to the calendar and explaining what all the symbols do. So we talked about basic actions and the ability to gain more. So when you get to a month, when the month starts, before taking actions, uh, look at what it tells you to do. So weather means you roll the seasonal weather dice, so winter only has one but it also rolls the cold one. So that makes up for it. Additionally, there's cold weather in November, December, January, February, which you just roll the cold weather dice. And then reference the chart here. So when you roll the weather dice, you see what it says, clear and cold. You find those two together. Chilly, no effect, but it's cold. Cold minus one dead wood or plus one to saber. There's a lot of different effects that can happen and um, there's different distributions of them during the different seasons. Um, yeah, so after you do the things for the season, you'll take your actions. Once you do that, you move to the next season. 
So like I said, during February, you got to feed your people um, and your taxes are built, your reliefs. So during the first, the very first year, your taxes are known from the beginning and they're always the same. And it's these five, I've already set them up for you. During future seasons, you'll shuffle these up with these other 16 and lay down however many it tells you to in February. Um, this is brewing which happens at the beginning of the season. This is the harvest. So after March is over, the harvest will happen, uh, which means that you roll dice for your seeds based on water retention, uh, modifying them by your soil quality, so on and so forth. Harvest has a lot of things that happen during it. Um, this one is weather again. It's spring. Spring has a lot of rain. It's fairly mild. And pestilence. You'll roll one Pestilence dice for each of your fields. So I'd lose the seed here. This one has nothing in it, so I don't. Roll that. Lose nothing. I'm fine. Um, May. There's the Spring Festival, so you gain an extra action. You gain Family Planning, which I'll explain last. Um, and you got to feed your people. Uh, June is Brewing and Pestilence. July is family planning. Again, I'll explain that in a minute, as well as weather, summer weather. This is King's Day plus Pestilence. You roll Pestilence, and then King's Day happens, plus feeding family. So King's Day, you look at the current Lord, and if you've paid your taxes early, you get benefits. So if you paid at least one of your taxes by King's Day, you get one bread. If you paid both, you get Prestige. Paying your taxes early is one of the easiest ways to get Prestige throughout the game. Uh, September, at the end of September, you harvest, at the beginning you brew. October is another family planning and weather. There's a lot of um, storms in uh, the autumn time. Then we get to taxes due. So taxes are due at the end of this month. So at the end of November, for all taxes unpaid, you gain disfavor. And you have to feed your family, and you start rolling the cold weather dice. Uh, that's all of the faces except for family planning. So here's how family planning works. These are the two potential ladies that you can marry. Underneath of them are their kids, and those are the future heirs and people. So based on your current level of prestige, five, six, seven, four, this should be a five, that's my mistake, four, five, six, five, six, seven, four, five, six, four. yeah. Based on the current level of your prestige, you can just elect to marry them. So if you have six prestige, you can marry Catherine. If you do that, you'll get a level 4 dowry. So you'll take the two level 4 dowries, which are uh, decent and large. You'll shuffle them up and take one. Um, the dowry that you receive will give you three things. It'll give you bread and beer. So one copy of bread and beer, so you gain one bread and one beer. It'll give you fields. So this will give you one field. And it'll give you additional prestige for getting married. Uh, the, a dowry is a gift from your wife's family to help uh, you and her settle into married life. Um, so as you have more and more prestige, you get a better and better dowry because they are more willing to marry off their uh, daughters to you. Um, like a royal dowry, two, two, two. So it's, yeah. Yep. So after you get married, let's say that you marry Edna and you get the dowry from her. Edna then joins you, um, as well as you flip her kids over and shuffle them all up. So during family planning, you can either get married, ooh, sorry about the crack, you can get married, which I just did. If you're already married, you have two choices. You can either gain an extra action. Well, that's May, July, and October. So you can either gain an extra action or you can attempt to have a child. So in lieu of that action, you can take these two dice and you can roll them. And based on what the results say, you'll know if you're having kids. So let's say that I rolled like this. Two, one. One, two, or two, one is one baby. So I take a baby and I put it nine months from when I had them, which cheat is just the the month right above the family planning so let's say I got married in 
uh, spring, July, I rolled a baby, and the next April they're going to be born. Um, so once next April rolls around, you will take that child and you will put them in your house. You need to feed that baby or you gain disfavor. Babies can only be fed by porridge. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, additionally, when you have a child, you're going to draw the top card of the deck and flip it to see if you had a boy or a girl. So there are two boys, and there's one girl that each combination of people can have. That means there's going to be 42 different heirs in the game. In this current game, there's only five. So there's um, William and Henry Milroy, as well as Alice. So let's say that I had Henry first. I, I, I realize I'm running out of room, there's a lot of components for this game. But um, let's say I had Henry first. Basically what I know now is that Henry is going to be my heir. He's going to inherit the farm and play the next generation. So his effect is, he has a different effect, different longevity, endurance, and heritage. Heritage means extra prestige you gain when they take over the farm. So when Henry takes over, you just gain one prestige. Um, additionally, all your heirs have effects. I'll go over those individually. Um, yes, so once you have one, they become your heir, so you can kind of put them underneath your person. Once you have your second son, your second son is will not have an effect on the next generation unless... When you're at market, you pay an appropriate amount of money to apprentice them. So you can spend 6, 8, or 10 to make them a craftsman, merchant, or tax collector. When you do that, you gain prestige equal to the number in the star. And you take the title and you put it on top of your, um, of your brother's effect. And that effect will help you in the next generation. So if I apprentice as a tax collector, after paying my first relief each year, I can flip an additional one for free. So, I could flip um, double taxes, because he helps me cheat on my taxes. The merchant gives me plus one field and plus one property to my wheat. And the craftsman makes all of the things in the market half price. It says tool upgrades, but it should say buildings and market cards. Um, and then daughters, you send them away with a certain amount of... Um, dowry and you gain prestige for that so daughters are a way um, for you to gain prestige for your family as well uh, but you have to spend dowry to marry them off um, so you're you, once you have kids they remain children until the end of your working years and they can never help you and they still need to be fed and all this other stuff um, but Yes, I believe once you reach the second generation, you've got two options for wives. Wives, And um, they don't have kids at the moment because the kids that you have won't affect generation three. So that's kind of where the play test or where the um, prototype is you know, cut off after two generations. Um, you could still have kids like as babies. I just don't have cards made up for them. And then I'll have some flat mechanic for now, like you gain prestige per child. Um, each heir has an effect. So Thomas Milroy has virile. NT means no baby and twin. Which is this these two ones. Instead of no baby, he has a baby on these. He gets plus one prestige when courting. So you lower the values of prestige required by your wife by one on all of the dowry levels. And every time he has a child, you gain a prestige. So once he has his first kid... You gain a prestige. Um, and now I've explained absolutely everything except paying your taxes, which is pretty simple. There are three kinds of taxes. There's labor, beer, and fermentum. For, and fermentum is grain, which is just wheat. So in this case, I could spend five wheat to pay this tax. Um, if my wheat is of higher quality, it also gives me a, a discount on that. So if I had quality four wheat, that would only be one wheat to pay this off. 
and then labor labor is based on the season you're in but it is literally just spending an action so right now i'm in autumn spend an action complete my autumn labor and that's just like working in the lord's fields and stuff um so yeah that is a completely comprehensive view of the game um i didn't exactly explain what all of these cards did what market cards did um but I believe that is everything you would need to know to play the game. So thanks for watching, and hopefully you enjoy.